Science Central. first underwater IMAX 3D film ever in uh, 1994. It was a film called Into the Deep. Prior to that, the IMAX 3D camera had never been underwater. With Under the Sea 3D, we had uh, about a year of filming. We did 120 days of diving, uh, and the diving took us from Cape Catastrophe, South Australia, uh, all the way up through the Great Barrier Reef into various locations in Papua New Guinea and eventually into southern Indonesia. It was a thrilling, exciting thing to do, to be down on the ocean floor with these amber forests of algae moving back and forth in the current, six or seven foot diameter stingrays swimming around within touching distance, and then sharks the size of automobiles. I mean, a great white shark can weigh 3,500 pounds or more. Uh, these are monstrous animals. Watching the sea lions come up so close to the camera, they could see their reflection, and watching that playfulness was great fun. And it's a very weird thing to be in the water with these wild animals coming up and mouthing you the way a puppy would, but puppies are domesticated and these are wild animals and have no fear. I had at no point did I fear that they might harm me. To have them that close and to see them, you know, in such proximity was enormously thrilling. What we strive to do with uh, Under the Sea 3D, not only to show the amazing wildlife behavior, but to give people a sense of what is happening with global warming and with ocean acidification. Too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is causing the ocean chemistry to change, and it actually causes the ocean to become more acidic. If seawater becomes too acidic, a lot of animals are going to become extinct, and it's going to be an enormous influence on the ocean and on, ultimately on us. There's a lot of small animals that might just disappear with nobody noticing and not even getting on the endangered species list. Uh, uh, leafy sea dragons and weedy sea dragons, very weird, unusual animals that, that if uh, water temperatures warm up too much, could just disappear in, in a few years. So I think most of the animals that are in the film potentially are threatened by what's happening in the ocean. Nobody's going to care about some esoteric animal that lives off Cape Catastrophe if they don't know it exists. But once you see a leafy sea dragon, you're going to like it. And it's our hope that people see these animals and learn to love them a little bit. If they love them a little bit, then they're going to be more inclined to do something to help protect them should that opportunity arise.